Every country has its quirks, but China is one of those countries that has a little too many. There have been intriguing and terrific discoveries of some usual Chinese habits and events considered odd by the rest of the world. From split pants to kissing dinosaurs, it seems there is no end to the cultural shock people get from visiting China. These experiences cannot be enjoyed anywhere else, and it's exciting to unravel these things that have been hidden from the rest of the world. Join us as we explore 20 strange and mind-boggling things you can only see in Chinese culture. Number 20. Live Crabs in Vending Machines In China, it's common to come across vending machines that offer a wide range of items, including live hairy crabs. These unique vending machines are particularly abundant in cities like Shanghai and Nanjing, where hairy crabs are a seasonal delicacy primarily enjoyed in autumn. Now here's the exciting part. The vending machines are stocked with live crabs and are kept in a state of hibernation at a chilly temperature of around 5 degrees Celsius to ensure they stay fresh. Customers can easily purchase by inserting money or using their mobile phones, and the machine would dispense a live crab neatly tucked into a small box, sometimes even with some complimentary crab vinegar and ginger tea. It might sound a bit strange to people unfamiliar with Chinese culture, but these live crab vending machines are a testament to China's innovative approach to commerce and its deep love for fresh and delicious seafood. In fact, the success of the vending machines has inspired similar ventures, including vending machines for live lobsters and even ones selling fresh meat and vegetables. Number 19. Dancing Grannies. In China, public squares, parks, and sidewalks often come alive with music and the synchronized moves of older women known as dancing grannies. These groups have become a widespread phenomenon across the country. They typically gather in the early mornings or evenings to perform choreographed routines to a mix of traditional Chinese music and contemporary pop songs. This social activity gives the elderly a chance to stay active, have fun, and build a sense of community. The dancing grannies, also known as Guangcheng Wu in Chinese, started gaining popularity in the 1990s, and their numbers have continued to grow. Their appeal lies in the fact that it offers an affordable and easily accessible form of exercise for older individuals. Moreover, these dance groups have created a space for older women to socialize and connect with their peers, which is crucial for their mental and emotional well-being. Despite occasional conflicts with residents, dancing grannies remain integral to Chinese culture, highlighting the significance of social connections and community involvement for the elderly. Their vibrant outfits, lively music, and energetic dance moves make for a unique and entertaining sight that's hard to find elsewhere. Number 18. Police Geese China has geese that are so well-behaved that the police are putting them on century duty. Geese are pretty famous for being super vigilant and having top-notch hearing. So they're basically natural-born guardians. They can keep a watchful eye on things just like police officers, which is why they've enlisted these feathered friends for guarding duties at police stations, prisons, and important government buildings. What's interesting is that geese are quite cost-effective compared to traditional guard dogs like German shepherds. They're easier to maintain and train and thrive in various environments. There's a bit of cultural significance to this too. Geese hold a special place in Chinese culture, and their modern use kind of bridges the gap between tradition and modern security practices. Of course, there are limitations. Geese might be less effective than dogs in certain situations, like chasing down suspects. But they sure do add an intriguing twist to the world of law enforcement. They have their honks and their watchful eyes helping to keep places safe, and it's definitely turned a few heads. Number 17. Babies with split pants. Toddlers in China wear these special pants called Kai Dang Ku with splits in them. It might sound unusual, but there's a reason behind this. The splits are there so their little bottoms can easily peek out, and it's actually an age-old method for toilet training young kids in China. With these pants, they can do their business without the fuss of clothing and diapers. This method is way less wasteful than using a gazillion diapers every year. In the United States alone, we toss out over 3.5 million tons of diaper waste annually. 
So, even though it might strike the rest of us as a bit odd, there's some wisdom in these split pants after all. Number 16. Rat Tribe Living Rat Tribe, or Zuzu in Chinese, refers to a rather unique phenomenon in China's major cities. Some people live in these small, windowless, and often overcrowded underground spaces. The spaces were initially built as bomb shelters during the Cold War, but have since become makeshift living quarters. This is because of the ever-growing population and the skyrocketing costs of housing in cities like Beijing. The residents of the Rat Tribe typically include low-income workers, migrants, or students who just can't manage the high expenses of renting or buying property in China's urban centers. These underground dwellings, while cramped and seriously lacking in natural light and ventilation, offer a more affordable housing option for people who are really struggling to make ends meet. The existence of the Rat Tribe underscores two significant issues facing many urban areas in China income inequality, and a housing crisis. But it also shows us the incredible resilience and determination of individuals doing their best to improve their lives, even in the face of some seriously tough circumstances. It's a story of people making the best out of challenging situations. Number 15. Ghost marriages. Ghost marriages, known as Minghun in Chinese, are an ancient tradition with centuries of history in China. This practice involves marrying two individuals who have passed away, often arranged by their families to ensure companionship in the afterlife. In some cases, a living person may even marry a deceased partner to honor a prior engagement or provide financial and emotional support to the surviving family. The rituals associated with ghost marriages can vary across different regions and ethnic groups in China. Typically, a matchmaker is tasked with finding a suitable match for the deceased, followed by ceremonies and offerings to honor the deceased's ancestors. Once the marriage is agreed upon, a symbolic wedding ceremony is held, often involving the exchange of gifts and dowries, reminiscent of traditional Chinese weddings. Despite being banned by the Chinese government, ghost marriages continue to be practiced in some rural regions and among specific ethnic groups. The tradition is deeply rooted in superstition and the belief that the deceased can still influence the fortunes of the living. It is believed that an unmarried deceased person may bring bad luck or unrest to their family, and a ghost marriage is seen as a way to appease their spirit. Number 14. The Kissing Dinosaurs In Ehrenhaut, nestled in one of the most remote corners of China right near the border with Mongolia, You'll find not one but two colossal dinosaur statues standing tall at the town's entrance. These aren't your run-of-the-mill dinosaurs, too. They're officially the largest dinosaurs in the world, and they're locked in what can only be described as a tongue-in-cheek snog. The region around Ehrenhaut is basically dinosaur central. It's renowned for its rich treasure trove of dinosaur fossils, and the local folks are keen on drawing tourists into the area and the kissing dinosaurs are just one of their creative attempts to lure in visitors. However, despite all their efforts, Ehrenhaut remains largely undiscovered, empty, and a bit bleak. It's a bit of a head-scratcher, really. You'd think kissing dinosaurs would be a big draw, but sometimes even the most charming dinos can't save a place from staying off the tourist radar. Number 13. Red underwear for good luck. In Chinese culture, Red is the ultimate symbol of good vibes and happiness. Also, wearing red underwear is considered a shield against lousy fetish and a magnet for good luck. This superstition goes into overdrive during big events and milestones. On occasions like the Chinese New Year, weddings, and other celebrations, it's pretty common for people to gift red undies to their friends and family. It's like a good luck charm, especially when someone's about to take on a major challenge or change in life. The red undies are often decked out with traditional symbols like those Chinese characters for happiness, wealth, or longevity, just to amp up their good vibes. This underwear tradition is deeply embedded in China's history and cultural beliefs. Red is this superhero color connected to the element of fire, and it's believed to have the power to shoo away evil spirits and bad luck. And this good fortune thing isn't just limited to underwear. Red is a superstar color all across Chinese culture. It pops up in clothing, decorations, and even on envelopes used for giving out money during special occasions. This is therefore one of those quirky and utterly fascinating quirks of Chinese culture that reminds us how tradition and symbolism play a significant role in everyday life. 
It's a window into their rich cultural heritage and the beliefs that continue to shape the lives of millions in China today. Number 12. Renting Fake Boyfriends or Girlfriends There's this immense pressure, especially on young adults, to settle down and tie the knot. Families and society have pretty high expectations in that department. To deal with this pressure, there's a whole business of renting fake boyfriends or girlfriends. The idea is to present what looks like the perfect partner to your family and friends. Renting a pretend partner might sound odd, but it's a way for individuals to ease the pressure during significant family gatherings, like Chinese New Year or weddings. These are occasions where questions about your relationship status are sung like a broken record. Your rented partner will join you at the event, shower you with affection, and basically play the part to convince your family that you're a happy couple. It might seem a bit deceptive, but it sheds light on the intense societal pressure many young Chinese folks grapple with regarding traditional expectations about marriage and relationships. This pressure can be even more challenging for those focused on their careers or who identify with the LGBTQ community and might not feel comfortable sharing their true relationship status. It's a complex dance between tradition, family, and personal choices in the modern world. Number 11. Shared Umbrellas This initiative was developed to provide umbrellas for rent at various spots throughout cities. So, when you are caught in the rain, you can snag an umbrella and return it when you're done. There are significant benefits to this shared umbrella idea. First, it's a convenient and eco-friendly solution to the age-old problem of getting stuck in the rain without an umbrella. Also, there will be no more reaching for disposable plastic rain ponchos that just add to environmental waste. It helps cut down on the number of umbrellas lost or forgotten, too, because people are more likely to return them to avoid extra charges. These shared umbrellas are just one piece of China's thriving sharing economy puzzle, which includes intriguing innovations like bike sharing and shared electric scooters. It shows China's commitment to developing sustainable and efficient urban solutions to meet the needs of its rapidly growing population. And it's not just about the technology. It's also about people being open to new ideas and tech that make life more convenient and eco-friendly. Number 10. Millionaire's Village Huachi Village, also known as Millionaire's Village, is this cozy little community tucked away in Jiangsu Province, China. However, this place is not your average village. It's practically dripping with wealth and luxury, and many of its residents are some of the wealthiest folks you'll find in China. If you're wondering how they got to this point, it's because of the village's knack for nailing industrial and agricultural production, plus their super innovative approach to economic development. Huachi Village is basically like a big collective enterprise. They all pitch in and run their businesses and resources together as a community, making them self-sufficient and seriously prosperous. But there's more. The village is also a hot spot for tourists. They have some pretty unique attractions like the world's tallest Mao Zedong statue, a hotel shaped like a giant pyramid, and a museum spilling the beans on the village's history and achievements. You can go human bird watching here. It's like a window into the traditional ways of China's ethnic minority groups and the unique practices they've passed down through generations. Plus, it's a chance to soak in the natural beauty of the region and connect with its diverse cultures. Number 9. The Dragon Escalator the Dragon Escalator used to be perched up at the Long King Gorge just north of Beijing, right where one of China's largest dams stands tall. It's intriguing that someone had this wild idea to build the massive, bright yellow and green dragon-shaped escalator that whisked people up a whopping 850 feet to the gorge. The dragon's massive body coils and twists, following the contours of the gorge. They even offered boat trips and bungee jumping off the dam to amp up the excitement. It was all about making the experience a thrilling day out. But unfortunately, there's no longer an option for such an adventure. The Dragon Escalator has been permanently closed and we'll just have to come up with other ways to keep ourselves entertained. Number 8. Dyeing Hair with Shoe Polish this unconventional hair coloring method has been gaining popularity in China because it's viewed as a budget-friendly and convenient alternative to traditional hair dyes, which can be costly and time-consuming. People apply shoe polish to their hair, let it dry, and then wash it out to achieve a darker shade. 
Many older individuals in China live on limited budgets and might not be able to afford regular salon visits or store-bought hair dyes. So, shoe polish that is readily available and doesn't break the bank is quickly adopted. It offers a quick and easy way to cover those gray hairs and achieve a youthful look. This doesn't override hair dyes, though. Traditional hair dyes are specifically formulated for use on human hair. They contain chemicals that are designed to penetrate the hair shaft and chemically alter the hair's natural color. These dyes contain ingredients like ammonia or hydrogen peroxide, which help open the hair cuticle and deposit color molecules inside the hair shaft. They also include a variety of color pigments to achieve specific shades. The application process may be a precise process that requires careful attention, but it's to avoid uneven color or damage. Hair dyes undergo rigorous safety testing to ensure they are safe for use on human hair and skin. While some individuals may experience allergies or sensitivities, proper hair dye is generally considered safe when used according to instructions. They provide long-lasting color, significantly changing the hair's hue and are available in a wide range of colors and shades. Using shoe polish to dye your hair might strike some as odd and potentially risky. Still, it showcases the resourcefulness and adaptability of individuals when it comes to finding creative solutions to everyday problems. It's a testament to how much people value their appearance and strive to meet societal beauty standards. However, suppose you ever consider trying this unconventional beauty technique. It's always a good idea to exercise caution and consult a professional before proceeding. Remember that your hair deserves tender, loving care, whether it's shoe polish or any other unconventional method you want to use. Number seven, canned air. There's an Australian company out there collecting air from all over Australia, then packaging it up and selling it to people in places where the air quality isn't so good, mainly in China. They claim each can offers a unique scent, but let's be honest, it's probably just the sweet smell of success for those Australian entrepreneurs. This can also be dangerous because it could expose people to the risk of chemical exposure. The products can contain various chemicals and propellants that can be harmful when inhaled. If that's the case, it can lead to irritation of the respiratory system, causing symptoms like coughing, shortness of breath, and chest discomfort. Another concern is oxygen depletion. The canned air may not contain pure oxygen, and inhaling it may lead to a decrease in the amount of oxygen available to your body. This can result in dizziness, confusion, and even loss of consciousness. In severe cases, oxygen deprivation can be life-threatening. In some cases, people may even develop a psychological dependence on the perceived sensation it provides, leading to ongoing use despite the risks. However, it seems like the Chinese that buy these products trust the manufacturers very well. They finish it fast as the cans hold about 130 to 140 deep breaths of Australian air. This market idea is an oddball idea, but since people are buying it, maybe there's something beneficial to this whole selling air thing. Number six, face kini beachwear. This unique beachwear trend first appeared in China around 2004. It's a stretchy fabric mask that covers the entire head, exposing only the eyes, nostrils, and mouth. People often pair face kinis with long sleeve shirts and leggings because they're designed to provide protection from the sun, jellyfish stings, and other potential beach hazards. Interestingly, the face kin has gained particular popularity among middle-aged and older women in China's coastal cities. This preference aligns with traditional Chinese beauty standards, where having fair skin is seen as a symbol of beauty, wealth, and social status. Conversely, tanned skin is often associated with outdoor labor and lower social classes. As a result, many people take great care to shield their skin from the sun. While face kinis might appear unusual or intimidating to outsiders, they have garnered widespread acceptance and popularity in China. These masks come in various colors and patterns, allowing wearers to express their style while safeguarding their skin. Remarkably, the face kini has even captured the attention of international fashion designers and has been featured in high fashion photo shoots, turning this practical beachwear into a unique fashion statement. Another common beachwear is the long sleeve shirt and leggings combo. 
You'll often see beachgoers, particularly middle-aged and older women, donning long-sleeved swim shirts and full-length leggings. The primary reason behind this choice is sun protection. As mentioned, many people take great care to shield themselves from the sun's rays to maintain their fair complexion. These full-cover outfits serve as a practical way to stay protected from the sun's harmful effects while enjoying the beach. This doesn't mean that some beachgoers don't opt for more conventional swimwear like swimsuits and swim trunks. This is, however, more popular among the younger crowd who are less concerned about sun exposure and more focused on enjoying the water and beach activities. Now it's time for today's subscribers pick. In case you didn't know, China has snake factories. Yes, you heard it right. There are factories dedicated to breeding and raising snakes for various purposes in China. Now these snake factories aren't typically located in bustling cities. They prefer the more rural areas where land is cheaper and more abundant. And they can be massive, housing thousands of snakes at a time, as you can see in this picture. They breed the snakes by keeping them in these large, temperature-controlled rooms where they're given top-notch care. Once they're all grown up, they're paired up to produce baby snakes. These little ones are raised until they're ready to find new homes. Some of them end up in zoos and pet stores around the world, where they become exotic pets. This is such a wild investment, but it seems to be succeeding. What would you do if you knew there was a snake factory around you? And would you work in one? Let's hear your opinions in the comment section. Number five, traffic jam, stand-ins. Traffic jams are a real headache in many of China's densely populated cities, and they've given rise to a rather unusual service known as traffic jam stand-ins. When drivers get stuck in traffic and have urgent matters to attend to, they hire these stand-ins to take their place in the car. The stand-ins wait in the vehicle until the traffic starts moving again, at which point they get in touch with the driver to return to their car. This service is typically provided by companies specializing in traffic jam assistance and can be quickly booked through apps or websites. The cost of hiring a stand-in varies depending on location, duration, and time of day. Some companies even offer additional services like delivering food or drinks to drivers stuck in traffic. While hiring a stand-in might sound like a rather extravagant and unusual solution, it shows how far some individuals are willing to go to deal with the stress and inconvenience caused by traffic jams in China's bustling urban centers. For people that can't hire stand-ins, though, they still find ways to while away their time. One thing some do is dive into the world of audio. Audiobooks and podcasts are a fantastic way to transform the car into a mobile library or discussion forum, and people use it to listen to gripping novels or thought-provoking podcasts. This helps their mind wander far from the confines of their vehicle. Number 4. The Stone Forest You'll find the Xilin Stone Forest down in the Yunnan province of South China. The rocks, often called karst formations, are like a work of art that's been in the making for over 270 million years. It's all thanks to seismic activity and the patient work of wind and water erosion on limestone that they came to be. Over countless millennia, wind and water did their work, eroding the limestone and sculpting these impressive pillars and rocks that we see today. It's a slow and patient process, with water gradually wearing away the stone to form these striking formations. When you step into the stone forest, you're greeted by these towering pillars and rocks that create this mystical winding space. It's like something straight out of a fairy tale. And within this rocky wonderland, you have smaller forests, waterfalls, hidden caves, serene lakes, and even an underground river. It's such a big deal that the Shillin Stone Forest has earned a spot on the UNESCO World Heritage List. And as you'd expect, legends and folklore swirl around this place, adding to its mystique. So if you're ever in Yunnan, this is one spot you definitely want to check out. Number 3. Napping at Work Napping is not just accepted, but encouraged in many Chinese companies and institutions. This practice, known as wushu, or noon rest, typically involves employees taking a 30-minute to one-hour break after lunch to recharge and rejuvenate. Workplace napping has deep roots in Chinese culture and history, reflecting the profound importance of balance and harmony between work and rest. The idea can be traced all the way back to ancient Chinese texts, 
like the Yellow Emperor's Inner Canon, which emphasized the significance of midday rest for maintaining one's health and well-being. And it's true. Taking a brief nap can help rejuvenate your mind and combat that mid-afternoon slump many of us experience. Even a 20 to 30 minute nap can improve alertness and cognitive performance, making you more productive when you return to your tasks. In today's China, workplace napping is further supported by the country's labor laws, which state that employees should be given a break during their eight-hour workday. Companies in China have embraced this practice in various ways. Some provide designated nap rooms complete with beds or comfy reclining chairs. Others allow employees to take breaks at their desks or communal spaces. Many workers even bring their own pillows and blankets, creating a cozy environment for a quick rest. However, it's important to note that not all Chinese companies embrace workplace napping, and some employees may not have the luxury of taking a midday rest. Nevertheless, the widespread practice of napping at work in China highlights the country's unique approach to work-life balance and its commitment to promoting employee well-being. Number 2. Real-Life Counterfeit Markets In many Chinese cities, you'll find entire markets devoted to selling counterfeit items. They sell everything from designer clothing and accessories to electronics and even food products. These markets usually set up their shops in busy shopping areas, with vendors proudly displaying their knockoff treasures alongside the real deal. Now, the quality of these counterfeits can really run the gamut. Some are so well made that you'd need a magnifying glass to spot the difference, while others are clearly subpar. Bargaining is practically an Olympic sport in these markets too, because vendors tend to jack up prices, especially if they spot a tourist. Interestingly, the counterfeit items are deeply woven into China's shopping culture. People just can't resist the allure of luxury items at a fraction of the price. Plus, there's a certain thrill in scoring a sweet deal. However, selling counterfeit goods raises severe ethical and legal red flags. There are violations of intellectual property rights, potential worker exploitation, and the safety risks that come with shoddy products. Chinese authorities are taking steps to crack down on this counterfeit business, but it's a tough nut to crack. The issue remains widespread, and completely wiping it out is a challenge. So while you're out shopping in China, keep your eyes peeled for those tempting bargains and be aware of the bigger picture. Number 1. Replicas of Famous Landmarks China has this remarkable knack for creating jaw-dropping replicas of famous landmarks from all over the world. You can find the scaled-down versions or full-scale reproductions in various places across the country, like theme parks, residential communities, and commercial areas. These replicas are constructed to give people a taste of international culture and architecture, especially if they haven't had the chance to travel abroad. It's like a little global tour right in your own backyard. Some examples of these buildings are a replica of the Eiffel Tower in Hangzhou, a copy of London's Tower Bridge in Suzhou, and a recreation of the Sydney Opera House in the coastal city of Qingdao. The replicas often turn into hot tourist spots and prime spots for photos. They draw in folks from both near and far. While there might be some controversy around these replicas, they're still magnets for crowds and generate loads of interest. It clearly reflects China's fascination with global culture and architecture. So, when exploring modern China, don't be surprised if you stumble upon these unexpected yet fascinating replicated landmarks. This list has exposed many of us to Chinese culture and landmarks, and we cannot help but be fascinated by the country. While some of these things may occur in a few other countries, they are most popular in China, and that's why you found them here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.